We previously discussed the anti-symmetry principle and showed that a consequence of this is that the wave function for a two electron system where we have a wave function psi which depends on the coordinates of electron one and electron two uh, has to switch sign when we interchange the two electrons. So psi of two one has to equal minus psi of one two and vice versa. So for a helium atom, which would be a two electron system, we had a wave function which we showed can satisfy this property when we write it like this where we have we can have some normalization factor out front if we want our wave function to be normalized and then we have psi 1 of electron 1 times psi 2 of electron 2 that product of orbitals minus psi 1 of electron 2 times psi 2 of electron 1 where in the second group here we've switched electron 2 and electron 1 in terms of which orbital they occupy and put a minus sign here. So the effect of this is that when we switch our electrons, if we switch all the labels of electron 1 and electron 2, you'll end up with the same wave function but with a different sign. So a wave function like this satisfies the anti-symmetry principle for a two electron wave function. And just for an example we could say that this psi 1 is the 1s alpha orbital for helium and that this psi 2 is the 1s beta orbital, so spin up and spin down with alpha and beta there. Okay, but if we want to extend this procedure to be more general so that we can apply to n electron systems or an arbitrary number of electrons, what do we need to do? Well, this will become clear once we look at how we need to do this for three electrons. So if we say psi of 1, 2, and 3, now our wave function has to be has to be anti-symmetric with respect to any interchange of any two electrons. If we exchange one and two and we get psi two one three, that has to have be the same wave function but with a negative sign. If we have psi of one three two, same thing. If we have psi of three two one, exchanging one and three, same thing. And if we exchange two electrons twice, we have to get the same wave function with the same sign back. So if we exchange two electrons we need to get the wave function back with the same sign. Okay so that sounds like it's going to be fairly complicated but let's look at how we would do the same type of procedure for three electrons. Well we're going to end up with six terms so I'm going to go ahead and put out a normalization factor here of one over square root of six. Then we'd have a product psi one electron one, psi two electron two, psi three for electron three. Just imagine three orbitals here, so this would be like a lithium atom with three electrons. Then we need another term for exchanging electron two and three. So I have psi one of one, psi two of three, psi three of two. Okay, so we've exchanged electron two and electron three and have a minus sign there, so that would be okay. Plus, we need another term. There are more possible changes we could do. Let's now chain, let's now swap electron 1 and electron 3. So we have psi 1, 3, psi 2, 1, swapping 1 and 3, psi 3, 2. We sw so we switch two electrons again, we get a positive sign back now because it's minus this. Now let's sw swap two again. There's more swaps we could do. We can swap 1 and 2 with 3 in the first orbital now. Psi 1 of 3, psi 2, of 2, psi 3 with electron 1. Okay, getting there. Uh, let's switch 2 again to get a unique pair. We haven't had electron 2 in orbital 1 yet, so let's switch 3 and 2. Let's get psi 1 of 2, psi second wave function of orbital electron 3, and electron 1 is still in this third orbital here. Uh, getting kind of messy there, okay. Okay, then the last combination we can do is keeping two there and exchanging one and three. Psi one of two, psi two of three, psi three of one. And I'm going to close that bracket that we opened at the beginning here. Okay, so this wave function includes all possible permutation, permutations of electron one, electron two, and electron three. And if you go through this wave function and you, and you exchange any two electrons, so if you take this psi, one, two, three, and you change out the labels of any two electrons like we, like we did up here, you'll see that you'll get the same wave function back with a negative sign. 
and then if you switch to it again, you'll get a positive sign back, etc. as far as as many switches that you, as you want to do. Okay, so you can see that we had two terms here. We have six terms with three orbitals. If you do this with four electrons, you're going to get 24 terms, and this very quickly blows up. This blows up as n factorial. So this obviously isn't something we want to write down like this. But there is a condensed way where we can write something like this. We can just say that for our two electron case, um, this type of product here is equivalent to saying 1 over the square root of 2, and then a determinant which looks like this, where we have psi 1 of 1, psi 2 of electron 1, psi 1 of electron 2, psi 2 of electron 2. So you know from the rules of multiplying a 2 by 2 determinant that we would get something that looks like psi 1 1 times psi 2 electron 2, this first product going down this diagonal, then minus going down the other diagonal, psi 2 of 1 and psi 1 of 2. So you can express this type of equation, this type of expression here in terms of a determinant that looks like this. And you could do the same thing for a 3 electron determinant. You would put a 1 over square root of 6 out in front and make a 3 by 3 determinant with these orbitals, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, forming the columns, and electrons 1, 2, and 3 forming the rows, as they did here. So the more general way in which we can write this is that the psi of, let's have electron 1, 2, dot, 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 counting all the way out to electron n for an n electron wave function for an atom that has, say, n electrons. We're going to have a one normalization constant of 1 over n factorial because if n is the number of electrons, we will see that this is n factorial is the number of terms that we end up getting back. And then we're going to have a determinant, again, where we have the electrons are rows, so row 1 is all electron 1, up into the nth orbital, occupied by electron 1. Then the individual columns being orbitals, rows being electrons. You can have the next row is the same thing for electron 2, dot dot dot, all the way down to psi 1 for electron n, psi 2 for electron n, and then the nth orbital for the nth electron, giving you an n by n determinant and giving you n factorial terms in the wave function. So this type of device here, this type of mathematical object which represents these n electron wave functions is called a Slater determinant. And in Hartree-Fock theory, our wave function is going to be a single Slater determinant like this. This is going to ensure that we satisfy the anti-symmetry principle that if we exchange any two electrons in our wave function, our wave function will switch sign, such that we can write something like, if we have psi of 1, 2, dot, 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 going to electron i and j for some n electron wave function, that that's going to be minus 1, 2, dot, 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 switching I, electron i and electron j i and j could be anything between 1 and n, including 1 and n themselves, that exchanging any two electrons, like electron i and j, will switch the sign of our wave function. So a Slater determinant helps us satisfy the anti-symmetry principle. It's going to be our Hartree-Fock wave function, and we're going to use this wave function now to see uh, what type of energy expression and operators we get uh, when we apply Hartree-Fock to, to atoms with many electrons.